Hello and welcome to Wheels Boy Chat. In today's video, we have the privilege of speaking with Mr. Juan Ma Lopez. Juan Ma Lopez is the former designer for Lamborghini, Ferrari, and Audi, as well as BYD, but he's now the Vice President Design Center for Xpop. For today, we're going to be talking to him about designing cars here in China, designing cars for the EV era, and designing cars with all of the autonomous driving in mind that all these brands use these days. So actually, First of all, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me with you. And uh, welcome also to Xpeng. Thank you. We are in Xpeng headquarters right now. Uh, so I appreciate that very much. I will start with that third topic that I mentioned, which is a brand like Xpeng is defined by its driver assistance system. It's self-driving. And part of that self-driving is the integration of a lot of different sensing units. So the current generation uses LiDAR units, different kinds of radar, cameras, uh, over 30 in all in certain models. My question for you as a designer is, do you try to integrate those sensors to make them as uh, invisible as possible? Or do you try to highlight them to maybe make it look more high tech? What is your approach? Well, uh, if you look at the, uh, the trends in the past, was to underline the technology, you know, uh, especially in the cars that uh, used to have the uh, additional elements uh, like part sensors or other, other elements. And it uh, was nice at this time to, to, to show up, you know, to show the, the technology of, of, this, of these cars. Um, nowadays, we are in a different trend. We are trying to integrate as much as possible the elements and also not only uh, the integration uh, of the of the uh, elements in the car, but also the car in the system and the user in the car. So, uh, in our intention, as you see, also in our interiors, are very minimalistic, very uh, puristic, and you have only a, a very subtle uh, digital landscape around you. Um, but the the main the main uh, elements are are not uh, visible. Uh, that means that also the client doesn't feel a victim of the technology surrounded by, by devices. Um, our, our intention is to make the client, uh, the driver, the, the passenger, really uh, enjoying ab about the, a good, let's say, space in the interior. And in the exterior, it's hap it happening the same. No? As much we can integrate our elements, um, I think, uh, as much we can is, is better. It's better because uh, you, you have a more puristic design, more puristic, uh, let's say, uh, appearance of the car. Mm -hmm. I think what you said there is very interesting, which is that when a technology is new, designers and brands tend to try to highlight it. So, for example, when LiDAR was very new to the market, say, a few years ago with the Xpeng P5, actually, I believe was the first production car to have it, you wanted to highlight it. You wanted to make it obvious because it was a selling point, but now it feels as though more and more brands have it, so you need to find other ways to separate yourself from the market. Exactly. So speaking about separating yourself, uh, one of the things that I'm very interested in is the unique challenges of designing EVs, I'm sorry, rather, designing more luxury cars, uh, premium vehicles in the EV era. So, if you think about traditional luxury car design elements, design cues, we think of things like a dash to axle, right? So the distance between the wheel and the uh, bottom of the dashboard, the end of the dashboard there. So there are certain brands, I think, that have honestly struggled with taking their traditional luxury designs and adapting it to EVs. So how do you feel it's possible to design a What's it, what's it take to design a luxury car in this EV era? How can you keep that luxury aesthetic? For me, the perception of a luxury is not only about the architecture, the architecture of the car that is transforming nowadays because uh, we see how in luxury uh, the, the, the B12, B8, B, B10 engines disappear. Mm -hmm. There's no and need for that anymore. No There's need no need for, for all the space. But beauty is beauty. And functional, <laughs> uh, functionality is also functionality. For me, uh, there is a proportion that uh, makes the car, let's say, uh, elegant. And this is the most important thing. Um, no matter how much space you have in, uh, in, in certain areas of the car, for me, one of the base uh, elements to place is the A-pillar position. So you cannot do a monovolume 
uh, don't uh, and don't take in consideration also the the, the visibility, for instance. No? So depending on which kind of architecture you, we we choose, for me the um, the way to add value to add elements that uh, represent luxury and represent uh, premium uh, is more in the in the materials that you use in the combination of the materials the proportion of the materials that you use the, the environment the atmosphere that you create create in the interior mm -hmm. the comfort and, and many other elements that are taking more and more uh, let's say importance rather than only the, the architecture mm -hmm. that's interesting so you actually started to touch on my next question. First of all, I want to compliment you on your phrase, beauty is beauty. <laughs> that should be, you should get a t-shirt with that written on it. Um, because you're absolutely right. You know, you know something beautiful when you see it. Um, you mentioned already a little bit about interiors. So I want to talk a bit more about that before we move on to maybe some X-Punk specific questions. So already you've discussed the fact that I think it's interesting you said you don't want to create an interior where the passenger feels like a, a victim of technology. They're surrounded by technology. And again, there seems to be a trend where, where, where we started off with the more screens, the better, you know, and it starts to go up, 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 tons of screens. And then we're now, I feel everyone's maybe pulling back a little bit and getting more towards a, a simpler aesthetic. So instead of uh, hyper screens, it's much more specific user user friendly screen. So is that is that? Do you agree with that? Do you feel like we're, I hope we're, we're moving away from screen overload? You're right. This is a good point. Um, for me, there is a cycle. Uh, maybe in certain cars, uh, maybe in a, in a MPVs or, mm -hmm. or big SUVs, family oriented. Uh, maybe the, the the screens are still uh, on, on function for the for the passengers for uh, for the entertainment of everyone in the car. Uh, but uh, as you see, the transformation of the of the interiors, especially from the traditional construction uh, and layout, full of elements, full of buttons, mm. uh, gear shifter, uh, cup holder there, and it, all the all the switches uh, that you manipulate one by one mechanically. Uh, even the clash, the interaction with the machine was very mechanic. It was a very brutal interaction, uh, uh, clapping the 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 the, the, the clash and, and uh, the, the the all these mechanical functions that uh, where, where the machine uh, w needs the, the user to 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 be uh, acting in this way, not to 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 drive the car. Nowadays, the simplification and the technology allows to take off all these kind of uh, additional elements that we used to have in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, we simplify as much as possible the interiors because the technology allows you to drive in a very comfortable way without taking care about many, many uh, actions and many switches, many operations before to, to, to drive the car safely. So for me, the simplification is, is a must. Uh, it will be the day that uh, you will you will have no commands in the car. You will get inside of the car, and the car will drive for you. Uh, so th this is the if you extrapolate the line, you see this uh, this moment, this momentum where we are now, where we are halfway into the into the final integration that is going to be, let's say, the 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 autonomous, the full autonomous driver. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I it's it, you made me think of another question. Obviously, you, you pointed out something very true, which is that interiors in cars now, buttons are going away. There's no longer, obviously, you know, a shifting a transmission. It's gone from, you know, a manual to maybe just a shift lever to now a, a simple uh, column mounted lever. In some ways, I'm a car enthusiast, right? I love cars. I love driving cars. And, and, and so, I think you know what I'm going to say, which is there is a certain amount of relationship that you develop with a car because of those mechanical uh, things. Even though they are in some ways kind of a pain, they help you to develop a machine-human connection. So I wonder, what do you think is a way as a designer for future vehicles that you can help to maintain that, that human-vehicle connection? Sure. Um, depending of the of the brand, depending also of the of the product. If it's a it's a very sporty product, maybe you need some uh, emotion inside as well. Right? Mm -hmm. um, in our in our cars nowadays, also 
uh, the emotion is also uh, present in the in the driving experience for the for the driver. No, um, not only because the performance of the cars are, are good enough. Uh, and give you some emotions, but also the configuration with the interface adapted to a more uh, sporty uh, or, or more comfort uh, driving mode. Uh, the car adapts itself uh, in terms of not only uh, interface, but also the illumination and uh, the performance itself. So uh, we, we, let's say, adapt this um, uh, traditional way to understand the, the, uh, the driving experience into something a little bit more modern. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we are speaking about uh, sport, uh, sports cars, uh, mm -hmm. but not in a radical way. So our 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 cars has some uh, sporting uh, appearance, but uh, we are not doing uh, sports cars. So uh, for me, uh, we we get a good balance between uh, the emotions that you perceive in the interior and in the driving experience. Um, Comparing with the with the commands and, and elements and actions that you, you have to do to interact with the object with the with mm -hmm. the machine. Mm -hmm. So the way you put it, it feels as though it's more the focus, and this is in every aspect of cars now. It's just as much on the the software. It's almost like you as a designer for an interior for the physical interior. I would think you need to work more hand in hand with the software engineers and exactly. the. UI and UX designers for an exactly. interior. I mean, that's that's got to be an interesting change to the way that you do your job um, to make sure those two can fit together. Yeah, sure. Also, because our young generations, they, they don't care about uh, uh, smoke, smell, and, and, and noise, and uh, they just want to plug the phone and, and drive. Uh, <laughs> yes. you know? There is a, a transition also in, in this new generation of users. Uh, that they are more focused in, in the in the intelligent, uh, let's say, transportation and uh, mobility, yes. rather than uh, in, a, in a let's say very strong experience, driver experience. Mm -hmm. More of as a as a as a utilitarian, a utility, a tool, as exactly. opposed to a yeah. Um, I definitely I definitely see that trend as well. So let's move towards, um, I, I want to talk a little bit before we get to X-Punk specific, I want to talk uh, a bit about, you do have some experience already, unlike many designers that I speak with, you have some experience in China already. You previously worked for BYD in, in 2018. Uh, you were head of uh, global head of exterior design, I believe, when they put out the uh, Exceed GT mm -hmm. concept, which is, first of all, I've seen it in person in, in, in Shenzhen, it's gorgeous. Sure. Thank and it, it was obviously extremely influential for the, for the brand. Um, I want to talk about, as a designer, have you seen uh, ch uh, Western automakers adapt their designs for the, for the Chinese audience? Because obviously China is, at this point, the largest car market in the world. It's the largest EV market by far. So have you seen any ways in which, or seen a trend in which, uh, Western automakers are taking their designs and, and taking a, almost a China-first approach. Somehow, yes. Uh, I think that uh, all the all the digital landscape that you have nowadays in the cars, some other brands are updating, also are influenced by by this kind of uh, uh, new configuration of the interiors that you have here in, in many in many brands in China. Uh, for sure, this uh, digital trend is is a is a. Um, it's a topic that many many other uh, brands around the world are implementing, thanks to the, the let's say the, the digital landscape. Yes, so it's uh, I I do definitely see. Well, it's it's inevitable with the influence that the Chinese market has in terms of just profit for these yeah. brands. That it, it, it's it's just it's very interesting and it must be very difficult when you have such different consumer demands for. Chinese uh, consumers versus American consumers or European consumers or South American consumers. Mm -hmm. Right now, Chinese brands pretty much only have to design for China <laughs> versus foreign brands that have to design for a global market. And I think, I think you'll agree, it's going to be very interesting to see whether the Chinese brands have to kind of adapt their designs at all for the global market or whether they're able to basically convince the global market, hey, this is actually what you want. Yeah, what is the limit? This is a very interesting topic, no? Uh, from the social point of view, um, mm. let's see what happened. I, I'm, I'm not so sure, but uh, you know, we are in the globalization era. Mm -hmm. So 
if you look at the uh, epicenter of the automotive industry in terms of design, right now is in, in Shanghai. Over 40 studios, design mm -hmm. studios, uh, are present in, in, in Shanghai. Um, that brings also uh, the possibility to, to do uh, a kind of uh, global design. And um, what Chinese brands are doing uh, for me, especially in our brand, Expand, is to understand what is the logic, what is the, the let's say, the, uh, the rationale behind uh, international design. So from our side, we have uh, over 200 designers from uh, 16 nationalities. So that means that also we are very, very much focused in, in to understand uh, and uh, how, how is, uh, let's say, uh, the, the global design uh, and make the design not only for the local market, which is very important, is mm -hmm. fundamental, but uh, also for the global, uh, global markets. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, are, we are paying very much attention also in to develop our trends uh, to, to be trendsetter in certain cases, not only in design, in, in technology as well, for sure, um, but in, in this global environment, not only looking at uh, focus in the local market. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's interesting that you use the word trendsetter because I would argue that, um, and I've heard you acknowledge this as well, the Xpeng P7, that design, um, Rafik Farag, I believe, was the designer behind that. He and his team, it, it is it is hard for people outside of China to understand how influential that design was in the direction of, of Chinese car design as a whole. That 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 visual profile of the upper LED and lower headlights is something that's just proliferated throughout the Chinese market. So I guess my question for you as we as we conclude the interview is you are now here at Xpeng, you've just arrived, so you're gonna be influencing some future designs. How is it that you, what is it you want to do? What do you want to bring to help to help further develop and define that design language that they, that they already have? Well, for me, um, my intention is to, uh, is to learn, to learn about this brand. Um, I really want to do the next step together with the team. Um, there is a big foundation already. Uh, we see so many great products in the, in the, in the market, especially P7 was a, a really excellent uh, product that influenced many other companies to simplify the design, to make the, let's say, the, the, the minimalistic expression of a sporty sedan elegant car. And uh, you can see how uh, after P7 many other brands, uh, mm. let's say, went to this trend. Mm where everybody was doing um, edgy lines, very character lines everywhere, uh, over design and, and, and Xpen came with a P7 with a minimalistic design, very interesting, uh, very well uh, uh, balanced in, in, in proportions and, and this created a trend. For me, um, and this is the reason why I joined this company, uh, this company has the, the, the right balance between uh, rational and emotional design. In one side we have the technology, as he shall open say, and in the other hand we have the, the let's say, the, the humanity, the, the, the human approach. So um, the, the DNA of the brand is in continuous evolution. We can see this from, from all the models. And uh, we, we are trying to extrapolate uh, uh, in our intention where is going to be our next destination. Mm -hmm. So this is already calculated. Uh, we are uh, together with, with Rafik, with um, uh, Wantan, we are creating the new step in our DNA, based in the DNA that uh, everybody knows uh, nowadays, uh, and calculating very well where it is going to be our final destination in the next uh, in the next step. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. That was a really interesting conversation. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to you know, follow up with any questions, uh, if you'd like to hear about uh, different topics here on the channel, be sure to let us know in the comments below. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Ms. Juan Lopez. Thank you so much. For taking the time to speak with us. We will catch you in the next episode.